Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, October 3rd, and this is Life Matters. Come on, let's talk about it. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I am Michelle Irby Johnson, and I am your host. This is Life Matters. Ah, you know, this is the platform where we talk about those things that are relative, particularly to the African-American community. And we just want to remind you that if you have questions, if you have comments, to please post them in the chat so that I can field them over to our amazing guest, (laughs) Miss Sheree Bell. Say hello to the people, my dear. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing out there? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm so excited to have you here with us today and I wanna read your bio so everybody knows what an amazing individual, amazing woman of God we have on with us on today. Miss Sheree Bell is an author, inspirational speaker, mentor, affirmation coach, and entrepreneur known as the BFF, bold, faithful, and fearless woman. Her life's motto is from a past of shame to a future of deliverance, which has been fulfilled through her passion to help others to declare their identity and to walk boldly in their calling. I know that's right. She (laughs) is the owner of Gifts by Journey, LLC, where she brings others' gifts, ideas to life through conversation, consultation, and building relationships with her clients to make sure that their gifts are heartfelt, impactful, keepsakes for the days to come to those that are gifted. She has over 30 years in ministry and has demonstrated her God-given talents through word, writing, leading, and mentorships. She lives in Leesburg, Virginia with her husband and for of over 30 years. Whoop, whoop, I might need you all to be an author on um, in one of, in our next coming book. And her amazing bulldog, Zori. Ooh, I like that. That's cute. She has two grown children, three grandchildren, and, um, and a grandbaby on the way. Well, all right, grandmama to be. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to the beautiful uh, Miss Sheree Bell. And I was commenting on her hair before the, <laughs> before the um, show started because, you know, I'm bald due to alopecia. But I'm so envious, if I can say that, I'm envious of her blue hair. It is so pretty because, you know, that's you. the color of alopecia awareness. And yes, I was like, shoot, I should have wore a blue wig all last month <laughs> in September. But anyway, I am so excited to have you, my dear, on with us today on Life Matters with Michelle. And so once again, everybody, we are talking to none other than Ms. Sheree Bell. And we are discussing a very important topic called community is deeper than blood. Now, I know some of you all are like, what does that mean? But she is getting ready to walk us through this and share with us exactly what that means. So my dear, uh, give us a little background on what that means and then we're gonna dive right into um, our topic of discussion for today. Well, you know, Michelle, that has been something that has bothered me like all of my, should I say, adult life. When you don't get family to support you. Now I have five sisters and my sisters definitely support me 100%. But I mean, like, you know, that that other family, like your cousins, your aunts, your uncles or whatever. And you feel that, hey, I'm family. Why wouldn't you come to me before you go to somebody else? Or even when you look at your friends that you consider like your best friends or whatever, why wouldn't you come to me before you go to someone else? You know, so when you started when I started thinking about that, God gave me the word community. 
It's all about the community in which you live in, the community in which, in which you practice in, the community in which you actually um, explore yourself in, in so many words. And that's what God brings to us. Sometimes it may not be family that supports you. You know, and that's okay because what God has done is he has aligned people in your life that's going to be that person that jumps in and support you um, in your times of need. You know, whether you realize that your support comes from people that you don't even know sometimes and you're looking like, wait, how did, where did that come from? And God taps you on the shoulder and he reminds you of that. So that's why I say community is deeper than blood when it comes to that. And that is amazing explanation because when we really consider that, I mean, and we can take it from so many different angles. If we look at our immediate family um, uh, unit, oftentimes there's a lot of um, uh, uh, strife or even infighting or jealousy. And mm -hmm. the very person that we expect or the very people that we expect to get on board with our dreams and get on board with what, you know, God is saying and doing. And please don't even talk about the ones who knew you before you got saved. <laughs> Ooh. that live in your household is like, well, I remember when, but God doesn't remember because it's in the sea of forget. Tell me about it. Tell me about let it. Let it go. Let it go. But I'm so glad that you said that because a lot of us, particularly in our community, mm -hmm. struggle with having the bands of community in our immediate families mm -hmm. and the damage that it causes um, when it's absent. Speak, for instance, you know, to the fact that women growing up with fathers that aren't in the house, that aren't right. really community. Right. That's I mean, and that's very true. Fortunately for me, my father was in the household. You know, I had my mom, my dad, my five sisters, and I had a brother who has since passed. But everybody was so supportive. I'm the youngest in my family. So when you think about that, you would think that it would take a lot for the older ones to support you, you know, because... It's like a whole difference and um, should I say a whole difference in my my next sister is seven years older than I am. Mm. So basically when they were teenage, when they were like seven and eight years old, I was this brand new baby. So it's like, wait a minute, where did she come from in so many words? When you think about things like that, you don't expect to get the support that you do. But with my sisters, they support me so much that if I went and sold pickles on a corner, they would be on the corner buying my pickles. I mean, I'm being so I am being so truthful for that. I mean, I've I've co-authored eight books, and my sisters have one of every single book. Now, whether or not they've read every last one of them is one thing, okay? But they have one of every one of those books, and that's the biggest support. But when you go outside of that immediate family, that immediate bond, you know, and you're looking for the people that you've supported in so many words, and you're figuring, hey, they supported me. Why don't I mean, I supported them. Why don't they support me? Yeah. But that's not what it's about. You don't support people so they can support you. You want them to support you from their heart and yeah. not because, oh, you know what? She purchased something from me. So let me do this. But and it doesn't even have to be buying. It could just be word of mouth, just being that support person. Hey, sis, I got you in prayer. You know, when things happen, I got you. Those things right there, we don't think about. Um, when it comes down to support, we think about more so purchasing. And let me let me back up for a second because I want to correct this before we forget. I have two grandbabies on the way now. When I oh. wrote that, I had one. <laughs> I have two now, so I want to make sure that I specify that. And there are two boys. So I have um, one granddaughter who just turned 16, a grandson that turned 15, a nine-year-old grandson, and then I have one grandson that will be due within the next month not even you know within the next month and then the next one will be due in january you know so that's so funny because my daughter-in-law said to me um well at least you know what your kids were doing during COVID. hmm i didn't need to hear that part but i'm glad you guys were definitely getting along right so that's <laughs> that's that's definitely a blessing so i just want to make sure i mentioned that i have a a fifth grand baby on the way so i'm excited about that but getting back to the community thing when you think about that we never think about community as in the people that surrounding us, you yeah. know, we never think about it as, oh, well, my blood brother or my blood sister. There are people that I, we brought into our family that they're not our blood and they have been so supportive down the line. I mean, like now think about it. How, how well do we know each other? 
Community. You get what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah, Community. yeah. Community. And that's what it's all about. It's community. But I bet you there are people that you may know and I may know that are our friends that may do have a podcast, have a show or whatever, and we've never been on it. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. So it's not about blood. It's not about friendship, but it's about community. And, you know, my husband had to remind me of this the other day when I was talking to him. We were talking about when the community first started and we talked about, he said, you know, think about it when Jesus was out there. All right. What did he do? He went out into the world and his family went looking for him. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. when his family went looking for him, he said, I'm out here serving my people in so many words. So he created in so many words that community for us to understand that it may not be in your backyard that you get the support. You know, you're going to get the support from anywhere. And when you have God on your side, don't even be concerned. Don't even be concerned. That's amazing because when you when you said that, the first thing I thought about was tribe because I've been telling my husband and several, several other people, I said, you know, based on who I am, my background, my, my capacity, the expanse of who I am, I've always had a, a hard time, or well, at least in my adult years, I've struggled with trying to figure out where I fit because, you know, when you're a pastor, you can't you can't roll with everybody. You right. can't tell everybody. You can't have the same amount of girlfriends that you used to have. And you can't tell mom and them everything that you're going through, because then, you know, it, it's not that you can't be vulnerable, but you have to find some place to get somebody that gives you that soft place to land in the spirit as well right. as in the natural who understands right. that they can go and pray for you, pray with you and they can uphold you in the spirit and so that you don't fall down or falter or whatever the case may be. And I've been saying, God, I, you know, I don't have a tribe. I don't have community as I would consider it. That is always easily accessible. Mm -hmm. and so the frustration that comes with that is that, okay, everybody can count on me, but who can I count on? Right. And so that, that, and when I found my kind of my bald community, um, through Facebook and, you know, shout out to Jamie L. Moore on, on Bald Boss Movement and the other young ladies on, on Bald Queendom and all that. I felt like I belonged because there's this host of women all over the world in these groups who have lost their hair mm -hmm. due to whether it as alopecia or chemicals or, or uh, uh, cancer or whatever the case may be. And I feel loved by them. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm looking for love, but I was like, wow, I found a piece of my tribe. So right. you said that about Jesus going out and he was out there helping the community. I'm like, that's right, because he, they didn't always come for him because a lot of them rejected him. But he went out and he gathered those, right. even his disciples. He he gathered those and they became became <laughs> his community. Can you speak a little bit? about people finding their tribe, <laughs> finding their community. Well, you know what? I, and I can definitely agree with you on that. You know, sometimes you figure, like you, Facebook is that life that um, everybody lives and it looks perfect. So you see people with all these friends and, you know, they're there and they're here and they're everywhere. You know, so you get back, you sit back a little bit. You're like, wait a minute. Well, like you said, where is my tribe? Where is my, where are my people? Where is my support system? And you know what? It seems like every time I say that, God brings someone my way that's mm -hmm. going to support me through the process of what I'm going through. So I, I say, sit back and allow God to bring those people to you and not you go searching. Cause see, when we go out searching, we pull in the wrong people, right? Because we're vulnerable, like you said. And I'm not a pastor, I'm a pastor's wife and I'm a minister. So you're right, not everybody is gonna be who you click with, but God will bring those people your way that, that will allow you to be vulnerable with them. You know, with them, they will allow you to cry on their shoulder and they won't judge you as being weak because that's a lot of times what we think about in ministry is, OK, who can I really tell what I'm going through? And they won't look at me with a with a different set of lens on. You know yeah. what I mean? After yeah. the story. And so I had to ask God, you know what, Lord, I need you to sh let me see people as you see them. OK. And when I started doing that, it was like I, he took the blinders off. And I was able to like accept them for who they were. And even more people came my way. The amazing part about it though, Michelle, is that when we allow God to pick our tribe, there is no loose ends. Oh you understand God. what I'm saying? There is no loose ends. What we forget is there are seasons that we go through 
with different people. There are seasons for some people, and then there's a lifelong season for others. And sometimes God will bring those people into your life that's only there for a season. But yeah. what happens is that we get attached and we want to keep those people. But uh -huh. then we don't realize that when we hold on to those people, what happens is it's not, it's not that you have to break up with them. OK, mm -hmm. when you're drifting, let the drift go, because what happens is that God says that that's enough time that that they've already served their purpose. You've yeah. already served your purpose in their life. Now, in order for you to get to the next level, let me bring this person to your life. And if we don't let them go, we can't go to the next level. Exactly. We never we never consider those things. You know, it's like, oh, wow, she doesn't talk to me anymore. What's going? Did I do something? I've done that. Did I do something? Not realizing God says time to let it go. Let yeah. it go. And when you do that, that's when God opens up doors that you cannot even imagine that he's going to open up. So when you think about that tribe, that tribe is who God brings into your life. And it may not be that everlasting tribe on a daily basis, but I bet you can go back to friends that you had years ago that you can communicate with and they can meet you right where you are. And you can definitely like confide in them. And they'll be like, I got you, girl. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to pray with you and not talk about you behind your back. Those are the things that you want in your tribe. Or should I say, those are the people that you want in your tribe, right? So Absolutely. we just have to be really careful about what we're asking for. You know, we've got to be really specific. God, I want people in my tribe that I can trust, you know? Mm -hmm. God, I want people in my tribe that when I have a bad day, God, they can they can pick me up and not fall into that pit with me. But say, girl, you need to pull on your big girl pants and move forward. Mm -hmm. I want people in my tribe that, God, when, when I tell them that, you know, things are not going right, they don't say, well, girl, did you do this or did you do that? But then more so, let's, let's, let's go on a prayer for you. So when you're praying for this tribe, just make sure you're praying for the right tribe. Yeah. That God yeah. will bring those people that's going to lift you up and not pull you down. And sometimes we don't think about that. We're just... We just want that tribe from time to time. We just want that community of people from time to time. And that's something we just got to be really careful about. Absolutely. You said so many things. I'm going to try and grab. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it, it, it was amazing. I wasn't going to stop you because you were on a roll and I loved it. One of the things that you said when you talked about um, tribe and community, one of the things I heard when you were talking about times and seasons and reasons, and we do hold on to people be, because we think that we have ownership of them because they've been nice or because they've been available or because they've been, you know, a participant in a certain season in our lives. And oftentimes pride will step in because we're like, well, why they don't talk to me? Why they let me go? It's not about us. And if, like you said, if we look at it from God's perspective and he's trying to clear the way for him to bring in somebody else who's going to help uh, promote you to the next level or somebody's going to help pray you to the next dimension, we can't get stuck in the who rather than in the what God is doing right. in our lives, in our spaces and in our times. And so that was so key. And another thing you said um, with regard to that and what I heard in my in my spirit was, you know, relationships have ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, they they evolve with time. They evolved with age. They evolve with what we go through. So my girlfriends from high school, even though I may talk to the one that's still available um, that I know of, um, I only talk to her maybe once or twice a year. We catch up and that's it. So it's not the same as when we were together, right. you know, 24 seven every day of the week when we were in high school, middle school, cheerleading together and all of these different things is still there, but it looks different and right. it provides a different need. And I think if we look at it in the context of, like you said, you know, ask God to send people, they send people into your community or into your tribe, because it's always going to be befitting of the season of your life. And there are some people who have more longevity, but the ones who don't, we have to be able to trust God when it's time to let them go. That was so rich when you said that, because I think a lot of us need to hear that and know that because we get caught up in numbers and we get caught up in, um, titles and associations and all of these different things and thinking that if we don't have those people, then we don't have what we need to go forward or to be. And that's not the truth at all. I, no, love, I love that. I love that. It definitely isn't the truth. And, and, and you know, it's we, we get caught, like you said, we get caught up in that. But think about it, like you said, as you grow, as you mature, you change. So your taste in food changes, right? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. So why wouldn't your taste and what you need in your life change? OK, if we remain the same, then we're stagnant. If we always required the same 
thing, then we're stagnant. And that's not what God does. God raises us up to different levels. Not saying that those people aren't on our level. It just means that there's a different division. He's divided and they're going to the next level in their life. And you're going to the next level in your life. And who knows? You may join again. Yeah. You may join again at some point in time. But for this season, God has moved them and he's brought more people in. What happens a lot of times is that we don't want to accept the people that God brings into our life because right. they don't seem to look like who we thought they would look like. They don't seem to act like who we thought they'd act like. They don't seem to talk like. Those are the things that kind of like you're missing out on opportunities that God has given you because, wait a minute, that person don't look like me. Well, that person yeah. don't seem like me. They don't talk like me. So that can't be, I'm not used to being around that particular type of person. God says, because I'm taking you to another level. And in order for you to get to the next level, this is going to be, be your step up in so many words. OK, so it's not because God says that those people are no longer on your level. He's just moving the levels in different directions. That's all it is to it. And that's what we have to remember. We forget it sometimes. We forget. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and so what? where would you say our community starts first? You know what? I would have to say that our community starts with us. <laughs> Sounds weird, right? But in order for me to build a community, I have to be, in so many words, ready to receive. You know what I mean? I have to be ready to receive whatever God brings my way. And so it has to start with in me wanting to be where God wants me to be, wanting me to build, wanting to build off of what God has given me. So I have to say that we have to get the mindset right first. And it's our mindset. OK, in order for us to evolve, in order for us to move forward, we have to get our mind right and functioning on what it is that God is calling us to do and what he has for us. So I believe it starts within us first. Awesome. Awesome. So when, when we when we talk about that and this is where I think my first comment came from earlier in the in the conversation, if people are still operating out of a skewed view. So say, for instance, they were adopted or they were abandoned by a parent or there was divorce or there was some type of traumatic situation. If they don't fix their thought process about who they are, they're never going to be able to welcome the new connections and the new community that God is bringing to them because everybody's going to be suspect. Everybody's going to be, well, I don't know that person. They remind me of this person. I don't like that person because they look like, they smell like, they act like. And so we do ourselves a disservice, like you said, by walking into something new that God is bringing to us with judgment or with right. scales on our eyes because you know, I'm not talking to Sheree because she has blue hair. and She's not talking to me because I have no hair, but she may be carrying the very thing yep. that God has been trying to deposit into my life or the very thing that I've been asking for. But because I'm being um, discriminatory, if I can say it that way, yep. um, you know, we miss out on what God is bringing to us because we discriminate based off what we see rather right. than what, God is the, what the Holy Spirit is telling us this is right for the season that you're in right now. Right. And that's very, you're right. That is very true. We are so used to the familiar. Okay. Uh -huh. And in order for us to grow, sometimes we have to be in that uncomfortable situation and nobody wants to be uncomfortable. However, right. in order for God to do a work in your life, sometimes things are going to be uncomfortable. The friendships are going to be uncomfortable. The situations that you're in is going to be uncomfortable in order for God to do a work. You have to sit through that process and allow God to do the, the healing or the, the satisfying or whatever in you before you're able to go out. So that's why I say the community has to start within me. My mindset has to change to know that God is trying to build something. OK, he's trying to build something not just within me, but, but with the connections that I have. And if I don't get that, then that's when I'm going to miss out on the opportunities this guy is you know, presenting to me at that time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just this is really, really good because um, I said something a little earlier about adoption and I'm not it doesn't have to necessarily be an actual adoption. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're adopted by our spiritual family. Sometimes we're adopted by our neighbors or adopted by our teachers or those people who have been so close and have mentored us, whether they knew it or not. They have pulled us into their realm or into their sphere of influence to the to the extent that 
you know, they may not be mom or dad, or they may not be sister or brother, but because they've done so much to us and in our lives, even unbeknownst to them, that we've brought them into our community. Right. As somebody who has been very instrumental or integral in um, in, in who we've become. Right. Who we are becoming. Right. That's very true because, you know, we're always saying, God, um, grow me. You know, God, I want to do your will. God, I want to be who you've called me to be. But yet when God presents these people to you to help you get to the place where he wants you to be, you're like, mm, no, 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 not that. That's uh, it's her over there that I want. It's not her or whoever, the, whatever the case may be. We never want to accept who God is putting in our life because for some reason they just don't fit into that. Um that pattern or that code or that, you know, whatever, that idea of who we think, you know, God should be putting in our life. We yeah. don't want to accept it. So we always want to go back and pull from what we are familiar with. And when we do that, that's what halts us. That's what keeps us in that place. And then we're wondering, God, why am I not growing? He said, yeah. you're not growing because you won't let go. In order yeah. for you to grow, you got to let go of some of those things. You know, we don't still play with toys that we played with as a kid, right? So right. why, when God say let go of the friends or the situations, we don't want to let go of those things, right? Because we feel it's it's um in some ways it's our comfort zone. It's our uh what would you call it? Um, it's 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 that piece of thing that we just want to hold on to, and God is saying let it go. You know, I mean, it's just. It's amazing. I mean, because I find myself being that way from time to time. Mm -hmm. And I have to just go back and be like, okay, sure, get it together. You know, you, you need to get it together. You know, <laughs> I mean, I have to do some serious self-talk to me, yeah. some serious self-talk. And um, that's why it's kind of one of those things where you're sitting back and you're saying, okay, God, what is it that you're trying to tell me through this situation? You know, I see that you're either pulling this person away or you're drawing me closer to this other person. What is it that you're trying to do in this season of my life? Because, mm -hmm. God, I want to make sure that I'm available for you. I'm available for you to use me. And sometimes God is like, OK, well, if you're available, why aren't you accepting the things that I'm giving you? Come on now. If you're not, if you're available, why aren't you listening to the things that I'm telling you? I'm sitting there right in your face. You're saying you want a tribe, you want a community. And I'm putting all these people here. You're like, oh, no, that's not the person. Well, then you're going to be stuck. And that's what it is. You are going to be stuck. And yeah. once we get that out of our head, then we're like, okay, I'm good to go. But it takes time. It truly takes time. And thankfully, I have my husband that sometimes like, look, you need to get a grip. You know, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I look at him like, yeah, right. Okay. You need to get a grip. But think about it. In your marriage, you change, right? Yeah. Your husband changes with you as you grow. And you look back and you're like, wait, hold up. I'm now 56 years old. I'll be 57 in what? 10 days, right? Hmm. Would this have been the same man that I had, would have chosen when I was 26? No, but I wasn't prepared for the man that I have now at 26. Right, right. I wouldn't have known what to do with the man that I have now at 26. Mm -hmm. So why would I even want to go back and say, you know what? I wish you were the same man that you were 26. I'm not the same woman I was when I was 26. Absolutely. Don't want to be her. So why am I looking for that same thing, even with community and tribe? I've grown. You've grown. So why not our communities grow? Why don't they look different now? Mm, mm. And that and that's some again. You said so many wonderful things when you I talked talk a lot, about. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> it's a talk show. So, <laughs> amen. So, so when you have when you talked about, you know, not letting people go or whatever you want to go find, and sometimes we are finding the familiar. But familiar doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Familiar doesn't necessarily mean, um, you know, that it's going to be for your good or working for your good. Right. Because oftentimes familiar spirits, <laughs> it brings, that's like, you know, you dating the same man with a different name or dating the same woman with a different, with a different name I'm or different you. face. But, but because you're looking for that same thing, even though that same thing is not getting you to a new place. It's the same thing with our tribe. And I'm so glad you said that. You didn't say it in these words, but this is what I'm regurgitating. <laughs> you know, I'm reiterating in this in this, um, in this this manner because we, we we say we want something new, but we keep chasing after the same types of relationships, right. the same types of people, the same types of groups. Okay, if you want to grow and be healthy, why are you still hanging out with the people who like ta Taco Tuesday? You need to be hanging with the people who like, um, you know, 
trail running Tuesday and, and go with them. You know what I mean? I'm just <laughs> no, you know I, I, I definitely get it. We we want to change, but yet we want to change, but yet we don't want to change. You know what I mean? Because that's it. You know, I mean, I want to go for a run today, but you know what? Nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to go to Taco Bell and that's where I'm going to go, right? So, you know, it's always about, do you really want what you say you want? Mm. And how much will you do to get it? You know, will mm. you really change to get where God wants you to be? Will you really shut down that relationship? Because God said to shut it down, you know, because you really want to be in line with what God says. Will you really do all the things that God has asked you to do so you can get to the next level? Or what will you do? That's what it's really all about, Michelle. And sometimes we don't even think about that. We exactly. don't even think about that. You know, we really don't think about that at all. You know, mm, that's, that's good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my little notes here. So that's why my head was down. But that, that is so amazing because we don't think about it. We, we, we have this type of vantage point. Mm hmm where God is expansive. God does not live in a box. He is not encapsulated in time. There's nothing that, you know, we can do that it does, that catches him off or catches him by surprise or what have you, but he's waiting for us to align ourselves with his will, no matter what that looks like. It right. may shape differently. It may smell right. different. It may have a different color. It may have a different background. It may even have a different religion, right. but we're so hemmed up on, well, I don't know that and I don't know them and I don't know where they're coming from and everything is the devil and everything. Stop it. <laughs> we say everything's the devil. Everything's the devil. Everything is not the devil. Sometimes God is trying to shake up your thought process or shake shake up your your um your perspective. Right. So that you can now see what he's trying to say and do in you and through you because of some extraneous thing or some outside person. And so we get so caught up in, well, you know, I only talk to people who are A and B, or I only talk to people who are in sales, or I only talk to people who are bald. Or I'll, no, you're not going to grow like that because right, right. You, you are the same person in that same group, and nobody in your group is any different, any stronger, any broader, has more capacity than you. You're going to be not just stuck, you're going to be stagnant, you're going to be stale, and you're going to die right there. Right, right, right. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's amazing because, you know, we never think about those things. We really don't think about those things. And then we wonder like, why am I still the same? Why am I not changing? Well, yeah. are you really want, or do you really want to change? Yeah. That's the big question. Do you really want to change and how much will you do to get it? Oh, see that part. So what is it that we can, um, get from our community because you know we, we've been talking about community and tribe here for a minute that we cannot seem to get from our families um from our blood whether it's immediate whether it's you know extended or what have you what is it that we are seeking to get from our community that we are not receiving from our blood and some people is acceptance mm. <laughs> and some people they just want to be accepted you know, they just want to be accepted for who they are. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've, there's a lot of times people act one way around their family and then they act totally different when they're around people that accept them. Turn you know to what I mean? Neighbor. Right. To so neighbor. when you, when mm -hmm. you think about that, sometimes we just want acceptance we want to be accepted for who we are. We don't want to, we don't want to have to put on this kind of um, air. air about us or anything like that. I just want to be sure. Right. I just want to be relaxed. I just want to, you know, if I like, I change my hair color all the time. Okay. I mean, I truly do. I change my hair color all the time. People accept me for my hair color. It doesn't matter to me if you don't accept me. I'm not going to not do it because you don't accept me. Right. Sometimes people just want to be accepted. My family look at me like, girl, you changed your hair again. I'm like, yeah, well, what color are you going to do next? It's not like, what? My grandkids like, grandma, you changed your that's just, That's just me. They never know what is going to be the next time. Mm -hmm. sometimes family don't want to accept you for that. You know, I remember when I first got, I remember when I first married my husband, my husband um, was a minister already. Okay. Mm -hmm. My tags on my car had diva, devious diva pulling up into the church parking lot. Okay. <laughs> that was how I met him pulling up into the church parking lot. Once we got married, I remember the ladies of the church saying to him, like, if I cut my hair, you let your wife cut her hair? Let. I was like, that's what I was like. He's like, let her cut her hair? You let your wife cut her hair? 
You let your wife color her hair? You let your wife dress like that? I was like, wait a minute, hold up. What's wrong with the way I dress? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me cutting my hair? I'm not getting this because people have their own idea of what ministers, pastors, preachers, teachers, they have their own idea of what they're supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. I don't think in the word it says anything about how we are supposed to look. Nope. You know, however, they look for those things. And when we don't have it, hmm, no, they're not really saved. Or well, they're yeah. not really called to serve God. You know, I don't know what calling she got on her life with blue hair. Same calling you got on your life with black or brown. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me take that back. My calling is different. Because, see, there are some people that you may not be able to reach because of your black and brown hair. Mm -hmm. that I may be able to reach with my blue. Exactly. Just like there, there are people that you're going to reach with your bald head that mm -hmm. somebody with hair may not. You get what I'm trying to say? So I God do. makes sure that he provides for everybody. He didn't just provide for the straight laced. You know, mm -hmm. he provided for the edgy person. He provided for everybody. And when we realize that and accept that, we can go even further. So we have to understand that God has designed us all uniquely. His word says that we are unique, fearfully, wonderfully made, all of those things. Yes. And if we don't step into who he's called us to be, then we miss out. Not only do we miss out, Michelle, there are levels, there are layers, there are people waiting for us to accept who God has called us to be because they're going to be influenced by yeah. the words that God has given us. Mm -hmm. And when we don't do it, of course he can use somebody else. Don't get it twisted. But... <laughs> You get it? But when he we don't do it, they've missed out on the gifting that God has given you, on the anointing that God has given you. They're missing out on all of those things. Yeah. And you don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? No. And you, right, and, you and you certainly don't want to be held accountable for missing those who are assigned to you. I always tell people when I'm teaching Bible study and you're preaching or whatever, having conversations, I said, if you're not doing what God has called you to do, and you're misaligned, there are people who have been assigned to your walk, assigned to your grace, assigned to who you are in the kingdom. And if you don't walk in that authentic place, they're going to walk by you because you're being judgmental or they're going to miss what God is trying to do in and through you because you're looking at them differently. And so it, what if God looked at us in our wretchedness and said, you know what? She will never fit the mold. She will never do this. He will never do that. I remember when I first had to shave my head when my hair fell out and I went to go preach and somebody said, um, why did you cut your hair? I said, I didn't cut my hair. My hair fell out. I've been covering it up. I was trying to finagle these hairstyles and it's just, it was just time. And so it's like, so you're going to, you're going to preach like that? Is the word still the word? I'm it has, real. Nothing, has nothing to do with my hair. This is who I am. I'm now standing in my authentic self. I don't have hair. Okay, so what? The preached word is still going to go forth. Now, if you're sitting in the congregation with your arms folded, talking about what can she tell me because she has no hair, then you need to reexamine your relationship with God because clearly it's disjointed if right. you're focusing more on what my hair looks like or doesn't look like as opposed to what God is ready to pour into your spirit in this particular season. And so it's it's... It's really unfortunate that a lot of us get caught up in the extraneous things, the nondescripts, the, the things that really don't mean anything. And we miss out on who God is sending our way so that we can become the better part of who we're supposed to be and then step up and step in and step out. And I just, I just think it's just unfortunate that we do that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to plug in here and let you all know that we are talking to none other than Ms. Sheree Bell, and we are discussing community being deeper than blood, because oftentimes we think it just comes from our families, and sometimes our families don't accept us being blood, and those that we, you know, embrace, you know, that are not our family become our community. And Sheree, this was something that I heard in my spirit when you said that, you know, why do we look for when I asked you the question, why do we look for community outside of our family when we're not getting something? You said acceptance. The other thing I just heard in my spirit was belonging. Yeah. Sometimes you simply want to belong. You don't always want to be the outcast or be the one that's different or feel isolated or ostracized for whatever the reason may be. That's some of the reasons that we look for people outside of family because fa we don't we don't feel like we belong to family you know you're called the black sheep 
<laughs> of the family. What is that all about? I don't, I don't know what it's about. I truly don't know what it's about, but evidently those people don't have a clue. Um, that's really what it's all about. And you know, you mentioned authentic, uh, being your authentic self. You know what, in order for you to be your authentic self, you have to accept who you are first. And a lot of times we don't accept who we are and that's why people don't accept us. Because yeah. if we don't walk boldly in who God has called us to be, then how do we expect other people, you know, to, to accept us for who we are? If we don't accept that, you know, like, like you said, when you decided that, you know what, I'm going to stop finagling my hair. All right. I'm going to stop mm -hmm. finagling my hair and I'm going to just be who I am. And people looked at you kind of funny, but you know what? You were like, that's your issue. That's yeah. your, if you got a problem with this, you're you going to miss out on what God, you're going to miss out on what God trying to tell you because you're going to be looking at me one way and God trying to speak to you. And you've been waiting for somebody to speak and I'm giving you those words and you don't want to hear it because you're looking at my bald head. It's not about the messenger. Right. Okay. It's about the message. And exactly. people don't, they miss out on the message because they're too concerned about the messenger. You know, mm -hmm. who cares how you look? As long as you coming from the word. Now, if you coming from the word, you coming back, coming backwards, it's like, wait, hold up. Then there's an issue with that. But if you bring the word straight forward, I don't care how you look. Exactly. As long as you're speaking the word and we forget about that. We mm -hmm. forget about that. I'm glad you mentioned being authentic. We have to accept our authentic self for others that accept us. Exactly. I mean, and, and that goes back to something my husband was saying this morning. He was preaching, but he said, I said it somewhere in one of my, in my sermon um, earlier, but we are designers originals. <laughs> and so what that looks like is that I'm not supposed to look like Sheree. Mm -hmm. And Sheree is not supposed to look like me, nor she's supposed to act like me, walk like me, talk like me, dress like me, and all of those different things. And we're so busy trying to fit ourselves into a cookie cutter society that people can't differentiate us from the next person. And I'm not just talking about in ministry. I'm talking about on your job. I'm talking about, you know, in your community. I'm talking about at school. We get so caught up in everybody's got red bottoms. I got to get red bottoms. Everybody's wearing this. I got to wear that. And you going broke trying to look like the Joneses <laughs> all because you don't like who you are. You know, I don't own, I don't own anything designer. I put it out there in the atmosphere. My husband bought me something from Anautica. I don't know what that is, but anyway, and I told him, I said, you know, I don't do designers. So I don't know anything about them. I love going to the thrift store. I will, I will, be, I will buy the thrift store out. You hear me? <laughs> but I, because that's just who I am. I'm not, I'm not trying to look like anybody else. That's true. And, and so hopefully the prayer is that my community is just like that. It's just as diverse in terms of mindset and, you know, being the, themselves is just as diverse and colorful and, um, you know, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Eclectic. Right. Yes, definitely. As, 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 as I am so that I can appreciate the differences, you know, I can appreciate the fact that you're shorter than I am. Hallelujah. Cause I'm five, two. If you're shorter than me, yes. That means I'm taller than somebody. I'm four eleven and a half. So you got me. Oh, good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you know, you said, you mentioned a few minutes ago, you said, um, what did you say? You mentioned, it just slipped my mind, but I was going to say, you were talking a few minutes ago and you were talking about people being different, right? And you were like, um, I'm Michelle. Well, you know what? Everybody else is taken, right? right. <laughs> so I, I, I just got to be Sheree. I'm stuck with Sheree because everybody else is taken. You yeah. know, even if there is another Sheree, she's still taken. You understand what I'm saying? So why not step into who I am? Why not be who I am? It took me a while to accept who I was, but guess what? I know who I am now and there's nothing that anybody else can tell me about that. You know, okay. you can't tell me who I am. And if mm. I can't tell you, then I have an issue. So you know what? Yeah, Michelle is taken. So I'm going to be Sheree. <laughs> I'm going to be Sheree. You know, I mean, it's not a second choice. I'm just saying I'm yeah. going to be Sheree. And sometimes people don't people don't think like that. You know, exactly. sometimes people exactly. don't think like that. And that, again, that goes back to that self-love. If you don't like who you are individually and you can't expect somebody else to love you. So you're trying to morph into what society deems to be beautiful and this and that. And, you know, um, you know, I had somebody say, well, I thought you shaved your head for a fashion statement. And I said, all you had to do was ask the intelligent question. And I certainly would have given you the intelligent answer. I'm not trying to be like anybody. Right. You know, and so, you know, it, that a fashion statement. 
Yeah. Right. I didn't wake up to, to do this. You know, it was very traumatic, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking to Miss Sheree Bell and we're discussing, you know, community is deeper than blood. And just as a slight recap, we're talking about finding that group of people or that group of support network that loves you for who you are and accepts you for who you are, or even the community that God has placed you in that is, is, is there to be um, a catalyst, if you will, to who you're becoming in him. Right. And so our community is going to look different at different ages and stages in our lives, different seasons and for different reasons. And we've got to embrace that wholeheartedly and don't kick against the prick, as the Bible says, trying to be somebody else and living miserably because we're trying to be somebody that we're not. There is only one of you and you right. can only replicate you. That's true. That's very true. Mm. Nothing. That, <laughs> that's true. That is so true. You know, acceptance, acceptance can kill you, boy. I mean, it can. It, sometimes it beats people down so hard that they don't realize that there are people that are willing to accept them for who they are, but they're looking for acceptance in the wrong places. Exactly. You know? And exactly. that's um that's what happens a lot of times. And it's and it steals the joy from us, you know. And it, it, we don't realize that people don't give us joy, so they can't take it from us. Right. So why are we allowing them to take up so much of our time? And space. why are we allowing them to take up so much of our time when there are people sitting waiting for our time, but we're too busy focusing on something else or someone exactly. else, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the part about it. That's why I always say community. And sometimes you may not even be around your blood family. All right. I mean, I lived in California for a very long time, for like seven years, five mm -hmm. years. And during that time, none of my fa blood family was there. But the area that I was in, my church was like my family Absolutely. because they accepted me for who I was. You know, it was no Sheree didn't have to hide. Sheree didn't have to be somebody she wasn't. Sheree could be vulnerable. They accepted me for who I was. And that was a community that God put me in at that time because that's what I needed. I needed family. It wasn't blood family. But it was God ordained family. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that was the best part about it. And I still am I am still in communication with them. And I've been gone from California since 2011. You know, yeah. and that's what God sets up. He sets it up. But we don't look for we're not looking for God's setup. We're looking for our own setup. Mm -mm. And can't you tell your setup has gotten you in trouble? If it's you not know? a God thing, it's, it's, it's it, if it's it can't be a good thing and, and not be a God thing. It's gotta be you know, in, in cahoots with one another. And I'm glad you said that about you living out there. My son has been in um, California for about six years. Mm -hmm. He's an actor. And so his community has been his classmates in in, um, in his um, acting classes and the, the job that he found or what have you. And when I was in the military for 26 years, that became my community. Mm -hmm. When I was deployed to this place or sent to that place or TDY at that place, for however long I was there, you develop community of people who, um, you know, rallied around you for whatever the reason was in that particular season of your life. And I love how you say, you know, you went there and your church became your family. So when we're talking to, you know, those who are listening or those who are watching, ask yourselves, who is your community? What do you consider to be your community? Is it your church? Is it your actual community, like who lives around the block, around the corner? Is it your job? Is it the military? Is it a group of young ladies or young men? You know, is it your school environment or, or your teachers? Who is your community and what have they done to solidify that in your heart to provide that, you know, that, you know, to fill up that space or that right. void in your life? Um, Sh Sheree, you said your, your church, whatever, what else is part of your community? Well, I mean, my church is part of my community. Um, my, of course, my family is part of my com community. And I, I think I told you in there that right now I'm um, Mrs. Leesburg. So mm -hmm. with that being said, my actual city is my community. My town is my community right now. You know, so that's how it works. Your community is who you build off of and who builds off of you, who accepts you for who you are, who supports you in your time of supporting and who you support. That's what the community is all about. It could be a small community, you know, a tight knit community, or it mm -hmm. could be a large community. Yeah. And that's what we have to, we got to get it. We have to understand it, you know? So mm -hmm. right now my community is basically my family, my church, and Leesburg for as a whole, you know, that's how it is because that's who I'm representing at this particular time. 
Well, I, want, I want to park there on the Mrs. Leesburg. <laughs> I, I need you to tell these people how wonderful you are. Well, you know, in God's grace. So you you, you were in an actual um, a pageant type of situation? So what happened was that I had to do an application and apply and I had to write out my reasons and what was my purpose and um, what, what was my platform going to be. And my platform is diversity from a woman's perspective. Um, and the reason being is because there's been so many things, not just on a black and white issue, but more so for women trying to get, um, in so many words, trying to move up the ladder. I have a 16 year old granddaughter that I wanted her to understand that there is no limit to what she can do. There's no limit to what she can be. You know how they used to say the glass ceiling? There yeah. is no glass ceiling. You know, yeah. there is no glass ceiling. She can step above that. And I wanted her to understand that it doesn't matter about her age, her size, her weight, her color, all of that is has nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? It's about her. It's about what she wants to do with her life, how far she wants to go. And I want to speak for all those other young ladies that don't understand that the power is within them. You know what I mean? They have to believe in themselves. I've never been in a pageant before. I'll be competing for Mrs. Um, Virginia America in 2022. Awesome. Again, Never been in a pageant before in my life. That is not my purpose, to be a, a pageant purpose, and a person in so many words. However, I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm loving being able to get out into my community, to support, to be that voice for those that don't have a voice. So it's very exciting right now, you know, with what I'm doing. Um, it kind of keeps me busy, but I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm great. I'm, I'm faithful. I'm, you know, I'm glad that God has brought me to this point because it is definitely a God thing. It's nothing that I would have thought of on my own. He definitely called me to do this. That is awesome. That is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we are talking to Miss Sheree Bell. We are talking about um, community being deeper than blood. If any of you would like to speak with her, bring her in to be a motivational speaker, come in and talk about women's issues, you can certainly reach out to her by email at Speaks at ShereeBell.com. Let me spell that for you. It's S-H-E-R-A-E speaks at S-H-E-R-A-E-B-E-L-L.com. And you can certainly visit her website at www.SheraeBell.com. Do you have any closing remarks or advice <laughs> that you want to leave to our audience about, you know, community being deeper than blood? I would just say, be open to who God is calling into your life. Um, do not allow how they look how they sound, how they speak, how they act to dictate who, what part of the, your life they should share in on. Just know that God may be doing a different thing in your life at this particular time. And he's trying to take you to another level. So just be very open about it. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And for those of you who are watching, you can certainly catch the replay on my YouTube channel, Life Matters with Michelle TV official. That is YouTube Life Matters with Michelle TV official. We um, we post it the same day. So sometime this evening, um, it'll be on um, line. But also for those who don't have time to watch it, it also airs every Friday on sensationalsoundsradio.net at 4 o'clock p.m. You can listen online. That's right. Life Matters with Michelle will be on sensationalsoundsradio.net every Friday at 4 o'clock p.m. I am now seeking guests for 2022 for season four. If you would like to come on the show, if you would like to discuss a topic that you believe is relevant and relative to the African-American community, not being discriminatory, but I like to speak to those things that really plague and um, deal with um, what we're dealing with in our community specifically, please reach out to me at www.iam-mij.com forward slash contact us. I would love for you to be a guest on my show. Um, once again, it has been a pleasure, a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. To have you, Miss Sheree Bell, on the show today discussing community is deeper than blood. It has certainly been a blessing to have you here. And we're going to have to find something else for you to come back on the Thank show. Thank you so today. much. Because Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Michelle. You are so welcome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our show for today. Once again, you can catch us on YouTube at Life Matters with Michelle. 
TV official. That's Life Matters with Michelle TV official. Or you can listen on Fridays at 4 o'clock p.m. on sensationalsoundsradio.net. Until then, please know that what matters in your life matters to me. God bless and we'll see you again next time. God bless.